Now you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry for that. That's okay. Thank you, whoever step up and let me know, okay? Yeah. Mutation in the DNA. I'm not looking at the message when I'm studying, okay? So anything interruption happen, you can't see the screen, you cannot listen to me, please uh, unmute and tell me, okay? Okay. So I said like we read about the replication, how the DNA, uh, we form another copy of DNA. Then we go and uh, study about the damages of the DNA. If double-stranded DNA is damaged, what would be happen? If single-stranded DNA would be damaged, what would be happen? This we studied yesterday, right? Now, today we are going to discuss about the mutation in the DNA. And about the mutation, there's certain type of mutation, right? So now they said in mutation, silent is least problematic, you can say. This is the sequence, right? Degree of change. Silent, then missense, nonsense, frame shift. So frame shift is the most severe mutation which uh, causes multiple diseases in the paper light over here. They give you the example. So what is the uh, this mutation in the DNA? That is single nucleotide substitution are repaired by the DNA polymerase and the lipase. So what is that? We discussed this one in the previous session, single this one, uh, nucleotide oxygen appear. We said like a one nucleotide, which is like problematic, it is excise and repair. So same thing they are saying over here, that single nucleotide substitution is repaired by the DNA polymerase and ligase. Type of nucleotide point mutations are what? Transition like purine to purine, A to G, pyrimidine to pyrimidine, that is C to C, and purine to pyrimidine, that is trans version. When purine goes to the pyrimidine and pyrimidine go to the purines. So these are the different types of mutation, not very important as you know about this one. Single nucleotide substitution, these are very important. So silent mutation, what is silent mutation? Codes for the same synomians amino acids often involve the third position of codon, that is transfer RNA, verbal position. We study about the verbal, I told you last session that the verbal is what, when there is a uh, last last uh, nucleotide, which is not important. So first nucleotide that I told you, AU, is very important for the recognition of the anticodon and then insertion of the, that specific amino acid, right? Like in methionine, you have AUG. Let's say on messenger RNA, you have AU, and the other thing is changed. So this would not change the sequence, so it would be remain silent. So that is called verbal hypothesis, and the same thing they are discussing over here, that silent means what? that third position of the nucleotide is changed and it doesn't matter, it remains silent and holds for the same amino acid. Now, missense mutation, result in change amino acid. Now, in this case, your amino acid is totally changed, called conservative, if new amino acid has similar chemical structure. Example, sickle cell disease, substitution of glutamic acid with valine. You are very familiar with this sickle cell disease tested in the UR, tested in the NBME. Again, I'm highlighting. So missense mutation, what is happening? Your glutamic acid is changed with the valine. So what is happening? There's some change occur in the sequence of the nucleotide, right? Let's say I'm just giving you example in case of AUG, which is methionine. I'm just giving you example. It is not a serious note, right? Just giving you example. So it is going to ATT, right? So then instead of glutamic acid in the real deal, it will be valine in the structure and the whole of the uh, cell copy will be changed and the disease will be developed, which is called sickle cell disease. So sickle cell disease is high yield in every aspect, from pathology purpose, for biochemistry purpose, from hematology purpose, every purpose. Like it's uh, even the treatment, how it present, it must show in the exam, right? And you should know over here that sickle cell disease is due to which one type of mutation, it is missense mutation, right? Keep it in your mind. And what has happened? Glutamic acid is replaced with a valine, a valine. Nonsense mutation. So this is simple. You have to remain, uh, remember. Stop the nonsense, right? Stop the nonsense. This mnemonic will help you in the exam also. So nonsense mutation means when a stop codon is uh, coming in the way and you have to be uh, stop the synthesizing, synthesizing a protein, right? Polypeptide protein. So now you will be saying only no like when a polypeptide chain is formed. Let's say we are making some protein. Any protein came into your mind, some receptor. So when stop codon is in, entered, we have to stop that protein synthesis and then that polypeptide will be released, right? This whole process may be coming today, we discuss. Let's say these are the amino acid appearing like this one. This is the chain of polypeptide. So when you entered a stop codon, let's say I'm showing in these 
circuit. So what is happening? It is cut from the transfer RNA and it is released, right? So that is the normal process, right? But what they said, if you enter the stop codon early, the buzzword is early. When you encountered the stop codon early, let's say after three, uh, this is three, three, six, and seven. Seven amino acids you encounter, encountered a stop codon, it will result in some receptor protein, maybe receptor for LDL, right? LDL protein. So, but if the stop codon is entered right at this position after three, four, right here. So transfer of RNA or that whole machinery will be stopped synthesizing this protein. Now you can tell me when this protein will be synthesized, it could, for, could work for the receptor? No, because it is truncated. It is non-function, right? So that is called nonsense mutation. So it is called stop the nonsense. So nonsense is what? When you encountered early stop codon, so what is happening? The protein which is formed, it is not working properly. And uh, that is the uh, characteristics of that protein, okay? Now other mutation, these three are very good. So silent doesn't create any problem because it is uh, encountered the same protein, same amino acid. Miss sense, it creates some problem. And nonsense mutation, it will be, it will be make the truncated and non-functional protein, okay? Now the next is other mutation, so frame shift mutation. So what is frame shift mutation? The lesion are insertion. Or okay, over here they are showing you some mutation. Let me repeat those ones. Silent mutation means you see over here. Okay. So this is your coding DNA. What does the mean of coding? What does the mean of coding? All today's session is about this one thing, which is very hard to understand. So coding is when DNA is code something, right? It code or it makes something. I told you about yesterday, uh, some people are new, I think so, that DNA, when from DNA, you are making a copy of DNA. That is called a replication. As I told you, the example that women like the replica of some brain, clothes, right? So this is the same thing. DNA to DNA is the replication, right? Then when you make a DNA and from that DNA, you form messenger RNA, which is taking message from the cell outside in the cytoplasm. That's why it's called messenger because it is taking the message of the DNA, right? So that DNA, which form the messenger RNA, that DNA is called coding because it's code something, right? This DNA is called coding, which form the messenger RNA, right? So then the third thing I told you that then one messenger RNA, messenger RNA with the help of transfer RNA, right? And also the ribosomal RNA, which attach, it's the whole machinery. They go in together, ribosomal messenger transfer RNA, and they work together, the three guys, the three brothers. They work together, they form the proteins, and that process is called translation because they are translating, right? So DNA to DNA is replication, DNA to messenger RNA is coding, like coding DNA gives some message to the messenger and that message is, goes to the messenger RNA. Now this messenger RNA is going to transfer RNA and transfer RNA, let's say call the other brother, brother, which is ribosomal RNA and the three together translate this message, which is taken or uh, uh, giving to the messenger RNA, that is called translation. So making protein is called the translation. This is out of the way topic, but it is it is understanding the basics of biochemistry, right? Okay, so now this diagram they're showing over here, the first one is silent, right? So coding strain, over here, the coding strain, original sequence is GAG, right? Now the, what is happening? GA instead of G, now A, right? So what is happening? Messenger mRNA, it is A, but it will synthesize the same protein glutamine as it is synthesizing over here, right? So pay attention over here. So that is called the silent thing. Nothing different will be happen. It is uh, synthesizing glutamine. And after mutation, silently, it is still uh, synthesizing the glutamine. Miss sense. Now GAG is your original sequence. Now you come over here. So instead of G, uh, sorry, G is right there. Instead of A, now you have T, right? So T and G is still over there. So this position is changed, the middle one. So when it is T in the DNA, in the RNA, it will become U, right? Now you see the GAG is code for glutamine. Over here, glutamine is replaced with the valine. Now this is sickle cell disease, right? This is called missense. Now nonsense, stop the nonsense, right? So what is happening? GAG is the original sequence. Now you take it over here, right? 
So what is happening from the G, it go to T, but the A and G will be same. With the just D, it is replaced with the T. When the T comes in the DNA, it always go with the pair up with the U, right? UAG. So UAG is what? This is your star codon, right? UAG, UGG, UGA. These are all your star codon. So when star codon is encountered, what would be happen? This is stop. They return stop. As I told you, the poly, polypeptide chain will be terminated, right? And it would be truncated protein because star codon is encountered early in the course, right? That is the thing. Then they said about the frame shift. So frame shift mutation is what? Deletion or insertion of any number of nucleotide nide is visible by three misreading of all nucleotide down the screen. Protein may be shorter or longer and function may be disrupted or altered. Examples are Duchenne muscular dystrophy, tay sac disease, cystic fibrosis. I can tell you one thing you can highlight this thing. Because I told you yesterday also with whatever I'm telling you the highlighted that will be tested in the U word, okay? So these example, these examples are very important. Frame shift mutation and deletion. So keep it in mind. So what is happening over here? So this one is their car frame shift insertion. Now you see GAG, that is the sequence, right? So again, I'm taking this one to here because that is the original sequence. So what is happening? G in the same position, A in the same position. But something coming in between this G and this uh, this G and A. So what is that? Is T. So T when coming over here in encounter U on downstream. So what would be happen? This G will go on to the next sequence. So they that will how they said misreading of all the nucleotide down the stream because G A T. And then the next thing will be change over here, right? Now you will say no, you said like a verbal position. I know what you are saying, but this is not the verbal position. You are entirely putting something, right? Verbal position is when GAG is changed with this one. Anything else. You see GA, G instead of G, it is A. So down the road, glutamine, it is also synthesized glutamine. That is verbal thing. But insertion means in between this nucleotide because it is always the nucleotide sequence. There should be three. GAG, AUG for methionine, right? AUG for methionine is very important. It is tested in the U word and then BME also, okay? So in that is natural sequence. So this sequence is disrupted because something coming in between that. So when this T pair up with this G, A, and T, then there will be G, A, and U. So uh, over here, aspartate is now coming in between instead of glutamate. So when this is synthesizing aspartate, the next will be synthesizing something else. So down the stream, all nucleotide sequences change, all protein senses will be changed. So protein which are function, uh, which form may be abnormal or they don't function properly. That is what they're trying to mean and they give you the example of this one. Similarly, they tell you about the frame shift deletion. So what is this frame shift deletion? What is happening in the frame shift deletion? That you see this one, original sequence coming over here, G8. Now this third G, this one, it is going away. So when it's going away, immediately the next nucleotide, it come back and take its position, right? So now the sequence A, G, A, G, A, G, instead of this is G, A, C, and down is G, A, C. Now again, aspartate will be coming instead of glutamine. So entire sequence of the protein, amino acids in the protein will be changed. So your protein will be either shorter, longer, or truncated, or not functional. So that is the whole story about this mutation, which is very, very important. Now the last thing is splice side mutation, high yield. These two are very high here. Cystic fibrosis, you have to remember about cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis will be uh, caused by which type of, uh, you know, mutation. That is very important. Frame shift mutation. Okay. So now splice side mutation. So what is the concept of slide, splice side? So supply side means when your DNA make the DNA copy, right? So that is called replication, right? So one thing you have to remember, I will ask you when I, I reach over there, okay? When DNA make DNA, that is your replication. And in DNA, you have intron and you have exon. You word question. They will ask you, okay? They ask you copy of something and then ask you, does a DNA or the coding DNA have intron, exon, intron only, exon only? So DNA coding have intron and exon both together, right? But when messenger RNA is found, from the DNA, right? So that is your transcription. 
and that is your replication this processes okay so in transcription when coding dna from the messenger rna you have in mature messenger rna you have only exon no intron okay so what is happening when splice site is a splice site mean that is a process which is coming on the next pages in which we are making the immature heterogeneous copy of the RNA into the mature messenger RNA by removing the intron from the messenger RNA or from moving the introns from the immature messenger RNA. All the introns will be removed and introns stay in the nucleus. Okay. And only messenger RNA which go outside in the cytoplasm to store in the P bodies, that is your mature RNA, and this mature RNA take only exons, no introns, right? So that process by which we are removing the intron from the messenger RNA and only letting the exons in the messenger RNA to exit and take the message to the outside world in the cytoplasm is called splice side process or splicing process, right? So when there is a mutation in this splice citing process, your intron will be retained in the messenger RNA. They is not removed. So what would be happen? Then the messenger RNA who normally, normally don't have introns. When it retain introns, it go outside and form proteins. That proteins function is impaired or altered, right? That what is they are saying over here, splice site mutation, the process is interrupted, retained intron in the messenger RNA protein with impaired altered function because the messenger RNA which get the message from that cell nucleus is now truncated from proteins. So that are truncated are not functioning properly. So examples are very important again, cancers, dementia, epilepsy, some type of beta thalassemia, Gaucher, Marfan syndrome high high yield you have to make some mnemonic on your site and then uh, retalize it like memorize it okay so i will try if i had some mnemonic i will share here okay but all the things you have to remember so that is like some mutation this process is coming on the next uh, pages i will explain it over here but this one thing which is like a lack of brand lack of run is a very high yield so you go to my channel which is mads with Noni G. Today, I will, if I remember, I will share the link also. This is not why, for advertisement. This is for you guys that when you are forget <clears throat> how Noni teaches about the lack of ROM, which is right there in this channel, free for you guys. Okay. So you go over there and uh, read from there. So in that uh, channel, I make small videos, but they are very helpful. Even when I was preparing my step exam, I forget anything. I go and do my videos for myself only, my, myself also, okay? So go over there and uh, see this video, lack of around over there. I am telling you uh, briefly over here. If you forget, you go and read that uh, video also, uh, see that video also, okay? Yeah, somebody see that A, B, C, D. Okay, share this one, Alex, in the... Uh, uh, biochemistry group, okay? Thank you. So, lack operon. Lack operon is what? Lack means lactulose operon will machine operate something, right? So, what is happening? The E. coli. So, E. coli preferred substrate. Like, our preferred substrate is what? We use glucose, fatty acids, and proteins, right? This is our favorite product. We use three. Likewise, E. coli. E. coli loves to be having the glucose, right? So E. coli love to utilize the glucose. So what is happening if something happened and the glucose is not available for the E. coli to survive? So it, naturally, everything has some mechanism. Like us, when glucose is not available, we will start utilizing what fats, right? And when fats is not available, we start utilizing our protein, right? So the in starvation, what is happening? So when you are like under them, like, um, some earthquake, you are like under some roof or something, you are utilizing what? Your fats, your proteins, that's how you survive, right? So this is naturally the mechanism in your body to survive you. So similarly, these tiny organisms, they are very intelligent. So they use their machinery to use other things for their survival. So this is like interesting thing for E. coli, that the E. coli use glucose to survive. 
So, but when equal when equal I don't have glucose available, it use this machinery to survive. So that is the basic concept. Electrodes using operation or operating machine. So classical example of genetic response to the environmental change. Environmental change is what when your environment is changed, right? So glucose genetic response because this genetic machinery is suddenly changed, right? But when glucose is absent and lactose is available, the lack of ron is activated to switch to the lactose metabolism. Mechanism of shift is this one. So what they are trying to uh, say you that this is the classical example, means this would be must tested in the yogurt, must tested in the NBM, right? So this is the genetic response. Why? Because genetic machinery is switching to the environmental change. So what is the environmental change? Glucose is survival for E. coli, but when glucose is absent, Lactose is available. The E. coli use this machinery to switch to the lactose metabolism. So how this machinery will be switched on, right? So what is happening over here? They said low glucose. So they said glucose inhibited this one, right? So what is happening when the E. coli have a ton of glucose, right? When E. coli live in the environment where is ton of glucose, then this glucose always inhibit this adenylcyclase enzyme. So what is the function of this adenylcyclase enzyme? You know, you will learn in all the biochemistry, ATP to cyclic AMP, ATP to cyclic AMP. What is the enzyme? Adenylate cyclase. So when glucose is available for the E. coli, this glucose inhibit this enzyme, adenylate cyclase. So down the road, whatever is happening is not working when, when glucose is available, right? Now, what they did some mistake over here, they didn't write low glucose. So what you need to do, you have to, if you have the hard copies, you write over here, low glucose, right? And put a positive sign. So then you will be not confused on your hard copy. This said glucose, when it is present, it will inhibit this enzyme. But you on your hard copy, right? Low glucose, positive sign, mean activate this enzyme, adenylate cyclase, right? Now go with me when glucose is absent, what is happening? So when there is a low glucose, what is happening? This enzyme is active. I'm just writing plus sign. So this and cyclase is active. So what is happening? ATP is converted into cyclic AMP, right? So cyclic AMP basically give energy. So what is happening? Cyclic AMP then move this cap protein, right? Cap. Cap protein is called what? Catabolic activator protein. So this catabolic activator protein is causes activation. This cyclic AMP causes activation of this cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP binds to the cap site and uses the transcription. So what does the transcription mean? Telling you again and again forming the messenger RNA. So messenger RNA will do what? It will make the proteins. Right? It will make the proteins. So what is happening when there is low glucose? I am signing low glucose. Right, so low glucose causes activation of adenylcyclase ATM, ATP is converted into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP causes activation of cap. The cap go and bind to the transcription site. This is this is the cap site. So cap go and bind to the cap site. It is showing over here. Cap is going to the cap site. So what we are hoping when cap is binding to its site, it activates the promoter. Right, promoter proteins. Right, so promoter will be activated. So this will be one step. So what is the second step will be happen? So second step is what? That, uh, let me read this one. Low glucose, increased adenylcyclase activity, increased generation of cyclic AMP from ATP, activation of catabolic activating protein and increased transcription. Now what is happening to the other side when there is a high lactose? When there is a high lactose. High lactose, it will cause what unbind the repressor protein from the repressor or operator site, right? So this was the top one is with the low glucose. The low one they are showing over here is when there is a high lactose, right? So high lactose does what? High lactose will remove this repressor protein. You see this cap, this is hook. You can say this is a hook on the top of this machinery. This hook should be removed because when we need to, uh, when we need this operator system to work, now, what is happening? One point. So when you have low glucose, so one thing will be happen, the cap will be activated. So cap activated and bind to the other side. So I told you when low glucose, what would be increased? The E. coli use, that is your lactose, right? Lactose will be increased. Now, you know that there is a low glucose, but the 
lactose is available for the E. coli to use. So this lactose, which is over here, they said allolactose. This is your all lactose. So these capsules, they go, they remove this repressor protein and bind it over here. So what does happen? This lactose will remove the repressor protein from here and bind it and causes inactivation. So when this is inactivated, what would be happen? The cap bind repressor removed by this lactose inducer thing, which is your enzyme, or you can say anything, which remove this hook from this machine, right? So what is happening? This whole machine start working. This whole this machine start working. So two two things you have necessary to operate this machinery inside your E. coli. So what are those things? The glucose quantity should be low, right? So when glucose quantity is decreasing, it will cause this activation of adenine cyclase, activation of the cap. And then second thing, lactose should be available. So whenever lactose is available, lactose go and bind to this repressor protein, taking it out and bind it with this one over here inside. And this will remain inactivated. It cannot go bind back on over here in this side. So this whole lack of machinery will be start working. So you see on this machinery, what you see, there are three types of genes. These are our genes are nucleotide, which make to, which which have to make some messenger RNA. So this lac Z, lac Y, lac A. They three of these they form the certain proteins. These protein names it is given in that video. I don't recall. Uh, I there is a permease and one other transferase. But I have explained every single function of that protein. That is from the U word knowledge, okay? That will be help you, all of you, okay? So those protein will help how they provide energy and uh, utilization of other things for the E. coli, right? So that is the whole procedure. Binding to the operator with the cap and then block the transcription. How transcription is blocked when this repressor protein hooking back, right? So when you see these states, these are very difficult states, like what's... What is this? We don't understand. But you have to just click a few things in your mind. I like over here, what I, they said, low glucose. Whenever in the question scenario, they said low glucose, you have to put the cap on its position. Because whenever there is a low glucose, ATP to cyclic AMP, activation of the cap, cap go to the cap side. So this, this uh, pink things will be back on, right? Okay. And this is your RNA polymerase, which is obviously activated because when cap bind to the cap site, it causes this activation, DNA polymerase, and DNA polymerase job is to what? Doing all that process, right? Lab genes will be strongly expressed, right? And lactose available, second things. So when low glucose, you have to think cap on its position if they give you this type of scenario, okay? And when lactose available, you should you just think that the repressor you have to remove, right? Now you see. When there is a high glucose, there is no cap over here. No cap. Lactose unavailable. Repressor is back on. The two things you have to remember on your brain. Low glucose, cap is on its position. Lactose available, repressor is not in its position. Because when lactose is available, this lacto lactose go and bind with the repressor. And repressor is not on its position. These two things you remember in your brain. These sequence you can answer any very easily. Low glucose, cap will be on its position because low glucose causes activation of cyclic EMP and cap. Highly yeah, uh, lactose available, no repressor on the thing. So what is happening? This is the favorite condition which E. coli used in the state of low glucose and lactose available, right? So lac apron is basically a machinery inside the E. coli when glucose is not available and they utilize the lactose to survive. That is the machinery and this is what? Lag genes are strongly expressed, and these three genes, lag Z, lag Y, and lag A, they are strongly expressed and they do, do carry their function. They make the proteins, all that process which we discussed later in the chapter and I summarized, right? So that is happening. Now you see high glucose, <clears throat> high glucose, uh, cap protein is not present because I told you when low, cap is there. High glucose, no cap. When lactose unavailable, Repressor back on its position. So then there is no cap and lag or repressor is on its position. No genes are expressed. Lag genes are not expressed, right? So you see this one and you put your hands on this side. Like this side, you put your hands. When I done with this session, you do, you can answer this question by yourself. When there is a low glucose, again, I said cap will be on. When there is lactose unavailable, 
So I said when whenever there is no lacto the no lactose available, then repressor cannot be removed. So you see, the uh, repressor is back on. And what is happening? Lac genes not expressed. Why? Right? Why they are not expressed? Though cap is there, but because of the repressor, this in operator system, this repressor protein is there. So cap is even causing activation of this one, but this repressor block the transcription right over here, right? So this is how. Now the last thing is high glucose. Whenever there is a high glucose, there is no cap. But they said lactose is available. So repressor is not there. But in this case, what is happening? You have a very low basal expression because repressor is not there. And cap is not there. So you, you don't have much expression. Like genes are not very much working. So what you need to do for favor me, watch that video. Do it again, putting your hands over here and answer this question. And might be I ask tomorrow in the session. Okay, this is lac operon is very important. So again, lac operon is what? Lac operon is the machinery which is E. coli used to survive when glucose is not available. Okay. Okay, functional organization of a eukaryotic gene. That is very, very important, right? So that is your basically all coming coming pages. So again, you see, they tell you about the replication in the previous pages, right? We study about the replication, we study about the mutation, repairs, and everything, right? This is in between a topic, right? Now they tell you about transcription, the next page. How DNA coding stand you form? Messenger RNA, and what is the job of the messenger RNA, right? So once you understand this sequence, and this is the same thing they give you like this way, which is called organization, how the things, how the gene are organized in the cells, right? So first of all, number one is DNA coding strain, <clears throat> right? So DNA coding strain is what I told you, the DNA from which you are making the messenger RNA copy, that is your coding strain, right? So then from the DNA, when you are making the messenger RNA, that process is called transcription because you are transcribed something, right? So when DNA coding strain, you form that, you do the transcription, you make the pre-messenger RNA, right? So this number one is your coding strain. Sorry, let me delete the comment. Yeah, so transcription, you are making pre-messenger RNA. So this one, this one is mad. This is your coding strain. I will explain. Then the transcription strand right over here. And you are making pre-messenger RNA over here. This number two is your pre-messenger RNA. How? Organizingly, they are present in the eukaryote. And then splicing, which I explained you. What is splicing? You are removing the intron from the messenger RNA. When pre-messenger RNA splicing is happening, you form the mature messenger RNA, this one. And when mature messenger RNA is formed, it goes into the cytoplasm, storing the P bodies and future for future translation. So what is the process of translation? That is when messenger RNA goes to the transfer RNA and combining with the ribosomal RNA, translate that message which is coming into the messenger RNA from the proteins right over here, the four they are showing the protein. So what is happening? This will get generally ex exp explained over here. So what is happening in the DNA strain, right? You know the DNA strain, there is a diclotide copies and all that. I told you there's a one string and then you are uh, doing the replication. That all DNA sequence they are telling. So in DNA, that strain, you have enhancer, which enhance, enhance the transcription promoter, which promote the transcription. These are basically region on the DNA. Then there is a five prime untranslated region, right? Untranslated region, which is not translate, right? Then there is an open reading frame because this reading frame, you are basically for, uh, make the messenger RNA. It's the reading frame, right? Then three prime untranslated region and you have the silencer. This is how the copy of the DNA is in your body, in our body, right? Everyone. Now they explain you about the coding. Like coding uh, DNA is what? Five prime, this box is your enhancer as silencer. These are the proteins. They simply tell you definition of what are these proteins they promote. They even silence, they can promote, depending upon the situation. Promoters, promoters are very important. Promoters are often tested in the U word. So there are two promoters, what is cat box and tata box. Cat box and tata box, memorize it by heart. Okay, so in the U word, there is a question that how much base pair the, their location is. So cat box is 75 base pair location and tata box is 25 base pair location. This is again a U word question. You will see in the U word also. So this cat box is 75 base pair. 
base pair means simply like its distance where it is located from the transcription, where the transcription start, what is the location? So let's say this is the point of like location. So it is upward 75 base pair and Tata box is close to the transcription site. So this is 25 base pair. This is all knowledge of the U-word, which I'm telling you over here, okay? 75 base pair is cat box and 25 base pair is the Tata box. So what are these two boxes? They are promoter. They promote, right? They promote the transcription. Then this is the arrow showing that this is this is the area where your transcription is started, right? The things important you have to remember is that you see this is the exon. Pink one are the exons, this whole area, right? Over here and this one. So this green area is untranslated, mean that this is not translated. This go as it is, but the exon is translated, right? So this is the intron. This you see areas. This I am putting cross. These are the intron. So what the U word will be asked you? The U word is asking that in coding strain you have intron, exon only, intron only, exon. So coding strain are the DNA. You have exon also. You have intron also, right? Now at the end, end ending of this uh, coding DNA, you have this polyadenylation signal. This is as it is present at ATPPA, right? So this is the signal. You have to just remember nothing like a very serious note to be remember. And silencers are on the three prime end, right? So enhancer are on the five prime end with the silencer, but silencers are only in the three prime end. These are the functional organization of the coding strain or the DNA strain, which you have to just remember as it is with this looking. Not like you have to remember G, U, A, G, T, she, she, nothing, just the concept. Just the concept. So what is the concept that the in the DNA you have intron, in the DNA you have exon, in the DNA on the five prime end you have enhancer and silencer, which enhance are silent depending upon the process. They are promoter, which are cat and tata box, which base pair they are located 75, 25, and there is a polyadenylation signal tail that is A, A, T, A, A. This you not remember. I never seen a question on that, but it is present on the three prime end, right? Now, when this undergo, you see transcription is started. When transcription is started, you form pre-messenger RNA, right? Now, somebody will ask you in the U word that what is the difference between the pre-messenger RNA and the mature messenger RNA? So what you can say? So what is the difference between the pre-messenger RNA and post, uh, sorry, mature messenger RNA? Because in pre-messenger RNA, you have exons, you have introns. So keep it in mind, make sure that what? That when you are making a pre-messenger RNA and mature messenger RNA, and they ask about you, is pre-messenger RNA have exon and intron? And you keep your only saying like D and the coding strain only have mature, uh, sorry, coding strain have exon and intron. She didn't say about the messenger, pre-messenger RNA. But if they told you about the pre and mature messenger RNA, then you have to remember that the pre, premature messenger RNA is similar to that of the coding DNA. Uh, DNA. The differences is no cata tart box is present, no enhances the lancer is present. You see, this is the whole signal from here to here. It is same. The only difference is no saline enhances, no promoters. And tail, it is similar. Just T is replaced by the U because U is in the RNAs, right? So that is what it is. Okay. So that is very important. Serious note. You have to remember that A, A, T, T is converted into U and all the A are still there. So what is the difference between the pre-messenger RNA and the mature messenger RNA? There is exon and intron in the pre-messenger RNA, but there is no introns in the mature RNA. These introns are not here in the mature RNA. Very, very important. And then they will ask you how you will remove those introns from the pre-messenger RNA, converting pre into mature. You are doing the splicing, supplies. You know, when you are supplying something, cutting something, these are cut down. So then you are converting pre-messenger RNA into the messenger RNA. Pre mean premature and mature mean mature. Now the thing is fully mature. So what is happening? Mature messenger RNA is basically taking the message of this coding strain. Whatever message, let's say coding strain is asking you to make the proteins 
which provide strengthening and shape of the cells. So that message is he tell to the messenger RNA. So, okay, give me, I'm giving you a story type examples. So what is happening? Let's say this is the cell, sorry. So stories like this is the cell, this is the nucleus in the cell. So what is happening? These are the proteins which are like happening over here. You know, integrity, maintaining of the integrity. These are all in your brain. These are the stories which make me have to remember the things. So let's say this protein is damaged, it's knock out. This protein is damaged, it's knock out. So what is happening? The shape of the cell, the integrity is little bit now disturbed. So what this nucleus will do, what? It will send message. It will send message to what? Messenger RNA. So this messenger RNA take message, come into the cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. tRNA and ribosomal RNA along with the, this is ribosomal small r, and messenger RNA. They together, they work together, like they talk to each other and say, we need some proteins to maintain the shape of this cell back again. So what they said, DNA send this copy to this messenger RNA. It go into the cytoplasm, combining with the two brothers, and they make the proteins. So this protein come back over here, and the shape of the cell is maintained. Like again, these proteins are formed and this shape, shape, cell is working, right? So normally, the when the cells are disturbed, they are destroyed. Apoptosis is happening. But the cells which cannot undergo apoptosis, there are some cells which is coming on the uh, coming pages, like skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, uh, sorry, cardiac neuron, skeletal muscle. These cells have to be maintained by this mechanism, right? So, pre-messenger RNA cannot be translated into protein. Pre-messenger RNA should undergo to the splicing mechanism, supplies out these introns to form the mature messenger RNA. And in mature messenger RNA, two more things will be happen. What are those things? Cap will be added, tail will be added. This is very important. There is a cap. You know the cap which you put on the sun, right? So, this capping is very important. This cap should be put on the messenger RNA inside the nucleus, right? And then this polydimination signal, this is tail. This is also added next to this tail, right? And then this whole thing, it is called your messenger RNA. It is formed from the transcription process. And then mature uh, messenger RNA would go into the cytoplasm, meet, uh, meet with the friends, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, and form the proteins. And the proteins are very different, which work for the cell itself, which work for, for, for the periphery. All the things in your body are the proteins, okay? Receptors, these all things are protein, okay? So that is the whole chemistry of this thing. This is the functional organization, okay? So in functional organization, what things you have to remember that in the coding strain, in the normal DNA strand, right? You have enhancer cell enzyme, you have cat tata box. Cat box is 75 base pair, tata box is 25 base pair. Then you have five prime untranslated region. Then you have three prime untranslated region with the polydenylation signal, which is AAT, AAAA. And you have at the end silences. But in the pre, when it undergo transcription, it forms the pre-messenger RNA. And pre-messenger RNA, you have exons, introns, and polydenylation signal. There is no 5 prime cap added onto the pre-messenger RNA. There is no tail added to the premature messenger RNA. This is also the differences, okay, between the pre and the mature. Then supply sensing is happening. So three process will be happening in which cap is added and then tail is added and along with the supplies of the introns will be happen. No introns will be entered into the mature messenger RNA. They are supplies out. All the exons are expressed, right? And then this messenger RNA go further into the translation process to form the proteins, okay? I explain it three to four times, okay? So this should be clear. Now, regulation of the gene expression, I will tell you the simple definition. So what is that promoter? The promoter are site where RNA polymerase 2, right? RNA polymerase 2 and multiple other transcription factor bind, right? So, you know, you are uh, you have read about the DNA polymerase 2, DNA polymerase 1, right? So, these things get confusion created in your brain. But the DNA polymerase 2, 1, they are for the replication. RNA polymerase 1, 2, 3, they are for the transcription. 
right? Because you see in the coding DNA, coding strain, you are starting the transcription, not the replication, right? So that's why they use the word RNA polymerases because RNA polymerases are for the transcription. So promoter, what you have to remember that promoter is the site where your RNA polymerases will be attached and start transcription. This is what they said. Where RNA polymerases to and multiple other transcription factors bind to the DNA upstream from the gene locus AT reach upstream sequence with the TART and CATA box. These are the sequence which differ between the eukaryote and prokaryote promoter increase the ORI activity, nothing important. Just you have to remember that the promoter is the region where your RNA polymerases are attached and start the transcription. Promoter mutation commonly result in dramatic decrease in the level of the gene expression. This thing is important. Just you have to remember that if there is a mutation in the promoter side, there is a very complicated question in the genetics about this promoter. I do remember they said like a methylation is happening, but I told you what, that whenever the word methylation is used, you have to choose in the option where you are not synthesizing anything, right? Because methylation makes the DNA mute. This is what they are saying that when promoter region mutation is happening or when methyl group is attached to the promoter region, there will be decreased level of the gene expression. These genes will be not expressed and the transcription will be not happening. When transcription will be not happen, there will be no message going to the messenger RNA, no messenger RNA from no messenger RNA, no translation, no proteins. And hence the answer, answer. DNA locus where regulatory proteins activated by an increasing expression of a gene on the same chromosome as I told you. Right? It is the region on the DNA in which they are enhanced the gene expression. Then silencer DNA locus with regulatory protein with pressure mind decreasing the expression of a gene on the same chromosomes. When they want the expression of some gene, when they want to down the expression of some gene, these are, are used, right? Now the question is like, you can say like, why there is a silencer? Why there is an enhancer? You see something is damaged, you need something, you make something, right? Let's say the factory is making 50 ports because order is 50. You have to stop the order now. Are you going, keep going making the 100 uh, port or 2,000 ports? So this is you have to remember in this vein, there are enhancer which enhance when it is need. And there are silencer when you need to stop that thing, right? So this is the mechanism. Enhancer and silencers may be located close to, far from, or even within in entron, the gene whose expression they vibrate, right? So this is the whole answer in one question in the U word. Enhancer and silencer. They are located close to or far from or even within the and intron, the gene whose expression they regulate. And then this is silencer, the same thing, epigenetics. This is a new topic. Okay, let's see what is that. So epigenetics is changes made to the gene's expression heritable, mitotically, myotically, without a change in the underlying DNA sequence. Primary mechanism of epigenetic change include DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding R. So epigenetics is what? They said like when there is a changes to the gene expression, right? Like heritably, mitotically and meiotically something is changed in the gene, right? Heritably, like you inherited something in your gene, right? So your sequence of DNA is not changed, but heritably you have changed something. So that is the mechanism of epigenetics and in which, what, where, why, how this epigenetics is happening due to methylation or histone modification, all that. That is not so important. That's just a definition. Okay, this is very important in which you are making a messenger, mature messenger RNA. Give me just two minutes. I, I forget to bring my water. I got a sip of water. You can like, uh, I am opening that page so far. So you look this one. So memorize. Just a two minutes.
Okay, thank you for waiting. Okay, so now RNA processing in eukaryote. So what is that? So this is all like we, they are telling you in eukaryote how the messenger RNA is formed. So I told you in this page that messenger RNA three processes is happening: capping, tail, and splicing. So this is how they explain on this page, and this is very very high yield. Whatever I am highlighting, this is high yield. Initial transfer called heterogeneous nuclear RNA, HNRNA. HNRNA is then modified and become messenger RNA. So heterogeneous nuclear RNA, premature RNA is the same thing. And this is converted into mature messenger RNA. So how this HNRNA is, or premature RNA is converted into mature RNA. The following processes occur in the nucleus. You would question, where is this process is happening? Inside the nucleus, right? Now, in the background, what you need to do, you make on the side a cell and a nucleus. So why I always make this one? So it will make a vision in my brain where I'm working, right? I'm working right in the center, right? So what they are saying, the following processes are occurring in the nucleus, capping of the five prime end. Capping of the 5 prime end, addition of the 7 methyl guanosine cap, co transcription. This co transcription is also very important. This whole lines you have to memorize, okay? Keep it in mind. So, 5 prime cap is added. What is that cap? It is 7 methyl guanosine cap at the 5 prime end. They can ask you what is happening. You word question, okay? So, this is co transcription mean when transcription is happening, this is happening at the same time, right? So, uh, 7 methyl guanosine cap is uh, added onto the 5 prime end. Then, polyadionation of 3 prime end. So, over here, 3 prime end, you are adding 200, 200 amino acid poly A tail post transcription. So, when your methyl cap is adding, then after the transcription is done, post transcriptionally, you add a tail, tail that is at the 3 prime end. What is that? tail to have 200 amino acid. Just let me know. I will tell you there is an enzyme acting over here. Maybe they have the give over here. I don't recall. But I have write every additional note from the U word and I will share. So polyadylation signal is what? At the 3 prime end, you are adding 200 amino acid and making a poly tail. Right? And the third thing, now you capped, you tailed. And now the third thing, supply sink out of the introns post transcription so this process tailing and removing of the introns is post transcriptional caped tailed and supplies transcript is called the mess mature messenger rna right which i told you on the next page right this r process is happening right over here at this the nucleus side so what is happening in the nucleus heterogeneous nuclear rna is formed which is premature rna premature rna is converted into mature rna each process is happening in the nucleus what is the process you putting a cap which is the cap that is seven methyl guanosine cap where it is uh, put at the five prime end when it is happening co-transcriptionally what is tail it is polyadylation signal what is made up of 200 amino acids where it ended where it is added at the three prime end and it is happening post-transcriptionally then the splicing is occurred. What is splicing? You splice out the entrons from the heterogeneous copy of the RNA and only exons will be expressed in the messenger RNA. This splicing now cap, tailed, and supplied transcript is called the mature messenger RNA. So now your messenger RNA is formed inside the nucleus, right? Inside the nucleus. So now mature, mature RNA is transported out of the nucleus to the translated in the cytosol. Now this is transported from here to the cytosol. So your messenger RNA is coming into the cytosol over here. So what is happening next to your messenger RNA, which you make inside the nucleus? Mature um, RNA quality control occurs at the cytoplasmic processing bodies, P bodies, very, very important. Now wherever you see the P bodies, you have to write down. This is one thing I do when I was preparing step one exam. The similar things I write at the same point, right? So P bodies, the Wibble polyd bodies, they are also called P bodies, right? Which have two things, E selectin and also, uh, sorry, P selectin and one more thing is a one vulnerant factor. 
right? So they are also called P bodies. So if I'm not wrong, so P bodies over here, these are the centers, quality control center, right? You know, there is a, when you make thousands of codes, then you have to check your control for quality purpose before sending them to the, you know, export them out. So there is a quality control in every factory. So this is a similarly, you synthesize something, sending it out into the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, there is a center, which is called the quality control center, P bodies. I'm just making imagination. These are your P bodies. So this messenger RNA is coming over here and stored for future translation, right? So messenger RNA quality control occur at the cytoplasm processing body, P bodies, which contain the exonucleases, very, very high yield, decaping enzyme and micro RNAs and messenger uh, micro RNAs. So these three things are in the P bodies. What are those? Exonucleases, decapping enzymes, and micro RNAs. So exonucleases will doing what? They will proofread. Everything is okay in the messenger RNA. Every gene is uh, like every nucleotide is correct. Every base is correct. Everything is correct. So this is exonuclease. They do the proofreading. Decapping enzyme will they remove the cap. They put the cap because when you transport from the nucleus to cytoplasm, this cap is on on the top of the messenger RNA, so nothing can destroy this one, right? So then what is happening? Then microRNAs. I will tell you the microRNA function on the next page. Okay, coming pages. Messenger RNA may be degraded or stored in the PRP body for the future translation, right? So what does that mean that the messenger RNA is stored or degraded for the future translation? Mean if they check there is some problem in this messenger RNA, like exonucleases, proofread, decapping enzyme will remove the cap. If there is some problem, they will remove this one, degrade this one. If it is fine, they will store in the P-body for future translation. Okay. Poly A polymerase that does require a template. Yeah. So this is the enzyme, poly A polymerase. So poly A polymerase is the enzyme. Just on a side note, you have to remember. So that is adding your tape, this one. Right, and this addition of the tail don't need a template. That you know the coding DNA it requires for transcription to make a messenger RNA. Right, you cannot make messenger RNA as it is. You need some template. So this signal which is adding over here, it don't need any any um, template. It's just adding as it by this enzyme AAU AAA polydynylation signal mutation in polyadenylation signal early degradation prior to translation. So you see this is very important. The importance is what? You need to ask any question? No? If you ask, you can unmute yourself, okay? Sorry. So polynylation signal mutation in this signals lead to the early degree degradation prior to translation. So this signals, it should be right over there, right? Before the translation is happening, right? So if it is not there, that messenger RNA will go degradation. So it is basically cap and tail, it protect the messenger RNA. Right. So now Kozak segments, right? And there is Okazaki segments. You see, I'm telling you the similar things in the biochemistry. We make you confused. Okazaki segments are those when replication is happening, right? Leading strain and lagging strain. In the laggy strains, you are making the fragments of the nucleotide, and then the ligase is adding them together to make a single sequence, right? So that is Okazaki sequence. This is Kozak sequence. So what is the Kozak sequence? You would can ask you this one too. Initiation site in the eukaryotic messenger RNA, right? So this RNA is what? A eukaryotic messenger RNA. So eukaryote is what? We are eukaryotes, right? So in the prokaryotes, initiation site is in the most messenger RNA, uh, sorry, this is a eukaryote, the same thing, COSAC sequence. Initiation site in the most eukaryotic messenger RNA facilitate binding of the small subunit of the ribosomes to the messenger RNA. Mutation in the sequence, impairment of the initiation of the translation, decreased protein synthesis, high J. So what they are trying to tell you that the COSAC sequence, COSAC sequence is a sequence of something, you know, like uh, methionine, a a u g is the code for methionine, right? Before the methionine, there is a small sequence like this tail. They didn't tell me over here, but you know, this is the very, uh, very detailed thing. Don't need to dig into it. Just you have to remember that the COSAC sequence is at the initial side. There is a some sequence. Let me like in the imagination. Let's say this is your messenger RNA. 
this is five prime and this is three prime and right and this is all axons carrying all axons right so there is in imagination you can say right over here this one this is the cosac sequence so cosac sequence in your in your brain it should be like this yellow point initiation site in most of your messenger rna it facilitates the binding of the small subunit of the ribosome to the messenger rna there is small subunit there is a large subunit 30 subunit 60 subunit which is coming on the next page so that is the area where your subunit ribosome subunit is attached like this right and it should be right over there because if there is a mutation in this sequence impairment of the initiation of transition is ha not happening basically cosac sequence is the recognition point for our ribosomes right because ribosomes recognize this sequence then come and attach over here then transfer rna come and read the frame and we are synthesizing the protein so that is the sequence for ribosome to attach because i told you when this messenger rna go into the cytoplasm and stored in the p bodies p bodies messenger rna will become out for future translation when the needed right this messenger rna it call other friends transfer rna and ribosomal rna oh guys the cell need to survive so we need to make some proteins right they are talking to each other now they are co collaborate with each other and form the proteins but this ribosomal rna it first come to go to the messenger rna and check cosac sequence is it right there because i need to call the transfer to read the frame right so this is how you make the uh, sequence or uh, you know diagram in your brain and start doing it this is the whole process of the messenger rna high yield for all of you you see many question when you doing the this one okay now rna polymerases right we study about the dna polymerases now the rna polymerases for the eukaryote and prokaryote right so rna polymerases are free type right one which is making the messenger rna one which is making the transfer rna one which is making the ribosomal rna these are all very important right so rna polymerases job is to make the rna dna polymerases job is to make the dna dna polymerases in replication rna polymerases in transcription right transcription means they are making the RNA, uh, messenger rna transfer rna ribosomal rna right so rna polymerase one makes the ribosomal rna the most common rampant you will question rna most common rampant very common or very abundant is ribosomal rna present in the nucleolus you would question they will ask you a question in which they show you the diagram in which they will mark different areas and ask you which is the area where your rna is located nucleolus okay rna is located in nucleolus so what is nucleolus some know and some don't know so this is your cell inside the cell you have nucleus which is your chromatin material chromosomes and everything is located inside the nucleolus there is a small structure this one it is called nucleolus right so nucleolus contain what ribosomal rna you got question they will ask you okay then rna1 makes the ribosomal rna ra2 RNA polymerase 2 make the messenger RNA. How you can remember? So I can simply tell you if you forget. So 2 make the which one form? So as I told you, RNA, RNAs uh, are making RNA polymerases make messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA. Important are these three you have to remember, right? Now, how you can remember that the one making the ribosomal RNA? And two, making the messenger RNA. For the two, you have to remember this is two, right? When you put this one thing, it becomes what? M. So always if I forget, I said like one, poly DNA polymerase one, two, and three. Which one making which one? So I immediately put this one right here. Oh, RNA polymerase two form the messenger RNA. Then I go to the three. 3 mean 3, T H R E 3, T, transfer RNA. Now I left with the 1. I said, oh, 1 is for the ribosomal RNA. I got it. I can answer this question. This is how you can memorize the thing in your brain, okay? So 2 is making the messenger RNA, which is massive. Micro RNAs, which is also formed with this 
2 and the small nuclear RNA, SNRNA, they are also formed from this one. This is all the retinalization you have to memorize. RNA polymerase 3 form makes the 5S ribosomal RNA. Transfer RNA tiny, which I told you, T tiny T3. Please make work with me, okay? So what other things you have to remember? So these all are very important, especially the messenger ribosomal and transfer RNA. Don't forget to memorize it. No proof read function, but can initiate chains RNA polymerase to open DNA at the promoter site, right? So which I told you over here in the previous page, when you are making this transcription site, right? Now RNA, the RNA polymerase, right? Open at the promoter site over here. If the you would ask you which side the RNA polymerase is uh, acting, at the promoter, at the enhancer or silencer, promoter side, not the enhancer silencer, okay? So keep it in mind. You are now starting the transcription, okay? So no proof reading, very important, high yield, right? Why? Because in replication, you see there is a proof reading function. Our DNA polymerase is two, three, two and one. They also do the job of the exonucleus function. Over here, there is a no proof reading function. Right? So no messenger RNA is formed, but it is not proofreading. Why? Because in the quality control center, you have exonucleus, we done this job, PE bodies. They done this job, proofreading, okay? So that is the point. So one, two, and three are numbered in the same order and their products are used in the protein synthesis, ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA, and then transfer RNA. So you first need ribosomal RNA, when the ribosomal RNA bind with the messenger RNA, that is initiation and then transfer RNA come on above top of it, which is coming on the next pages and start the translation, which is protein synthesis, okay? This is not important, let me clear it. Okay, so the next point, which is important, you would question, so you would will be asked, you, alpha amatinine found in the amanatin phyllodes, which is a death cap mushroom. So when you eat the accidentally the death cap mushroom, if it has this toxin, which is called alpha amatinine, right? So alpha amatinine is found in the amatinine phyllodes, which is death cap mushroom's name, and it will inhibit the RNA polymerase too. If you forget, you see amatinine have M, right? And M is synthesized by the two. So you have to remember that DNA polymerase two is inhibited by the alpha amatinine. You would question, the patient question, they will present that the patient have abdominal pain, uh, maybe hepatomegaly, and also vomiting, right? Dysentery, vomiting, hepato, toxicity basically happen. Maybe ascites also. This will be a question scenario. And they will ask you what happened to the patient. What does it uh, eat or what did it, what is inhibited? So you can say RNA polymerase inhibition is happening in that patient, right? So that is important, you would question. Then dactinomycin, this is also very important. Dactinomycin inhibit the RNA polymerase in both prokaryote and eukaryote. Right? Dactinomycin is I think so medicine if I'm not wrong. Okay. So it will inhibit the polymerases in both prokaryote and eukaryote. Over here, we just studied the RNA polymerases in eukaryotes. Us. Now in prokaryote, what is the job? In prokaryote, there is only one RNA polymerase. It is a multi-unit complex and it will make all three kinds of RNA. It is not hard to memorize. Then in prokaryote, poly. Right? In prokaryote, it is poly. So uh, poly mean, like poly is the word you can say, say poly mean many. So by prokaryote, you remember that in prokaryote, we have only one polymerase which have poly units or multi subunit complex which make all the three RNA, ribosomal transfer and the messenger RNA. Right, so this is the prokaryote story, and rifamycin, rifambutin inhibit DNA dependent RNA polymerase in prokaryote. Now you said I know we can remember how that uh, rifamycin is inhibiting the prokaryotic RNA. Right, so if you see this prokaryote, right, so in prokaryote is C, so you make it R. So this is way. Why? Why I'm showing you every single word on this page is important. Amatinine have M. So M mean RNA polymerase 2 because 2 make the M, right? So in the amatinine, inhibit M. Then come to rifampin. So you forget rifampin is inhibiting a eukaryote RNA polymerases or prokaryote. So taking a P, making it R. So rifampin is only inhibiting the RNA polymerases in prokaryotes. Then the third drug you have to remember on this page is dactinomycin, right? That you know inhibit both a eukaryotic and both prokaryotic. These three drugs will be tested in the 
uh, you will, okay? Okay, so one thing uh, I forget to tell you that there is a you heard question about this lack of ROM, right? So there is one question you will see in the you word, they will ask you that uh, this messenger RNA, which is formed over here, is the example of polycysternic messenger RNA. Polycysternic messenger RNA. Something like this. I explained in the videos also, which that means that this one messenger RNA is forming three proteins, Z, Y, and E. When you when one messenger RNA is making more than one protein, that is called polycystermic, right? So they give you in the U-word example that messenger RNA in the E. coli is the example of the polycystermic messenger RNA. Again, this is given in the video. You will watch that video again, okay? Okay, next comes to the next page. Okay. So this is basically how the proteins are formed. Very important. This is just a reading. So intron versus exon. What does that mean? Exons contain the actual genetic information, which I told you. Exon exit. Introns are the intervening sequence and stay in the nucleus. I told you that when messenger RNA is formed from the heterogeneous, like this is your cell. Inside the cell, you have nucleus in the nucleus to form messenger RNA, right? And I told you that in the messenger RNA, you have only exon. So exon Y, exon exit. Exit in the messenger RNA, RNA, right? So behind in the nucleus are introns. So introns are intervening segments and they stay inside the nucleus. So this is how you can remember, right? And stay in that room where exon exists and expressed, right? So this is how you can remember this one. Okay, then they said, exon contain the actual genetic information coding for the protein and the functional RNA, right? These are the function of the RNA because they are the functional unit. Introns do not code for a protein. They will ask you in the U word, you have to remember introns in, inside the nucleus, not exact, but are important in the regulation of the gene expression. Different exons are frequently combined by alternative splicing to produce a large number of unique proteins. So in this whole topic, what you have to remember is simply that. You see, this is your DNA. Same thing, 5 prime and 3 prime and. And in the DNA, you have exon, intron, exon, intron, exon, intron, exon, intron, exon, intron. This is the whole. So this is your coding DNA. So in this coding DNA, you are doing the transcription. Now you see there's a five prime and three prime and then five prime and three prime and this is showing you you the two two uh, uh, this uh, DNA strains right that's why there is a two five prime to three prime and three prime to five prime and, right then transcription is happening so you are making heterogeneous nuclear RNA so heterogeneous nuclear RNA is the pre -mess premature messenger RNA in which you have the exon one exon two exon three all that in between their intervening segment which are the introns because it is immature or it is premature right then splicing is up there splicing is basically coming on the next page I will tell you splicing means you are removing the introns this gray segment out from here and what is happening do you see over here five prime one two three four five six so these are six color they are combining over here to make one protein, which is translation. Because this messenger RNA go to the brother, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA to make the protein. Now, actual native splicing mean what? So in this first protein, you make sequence one, two, three, four, six exon. But in this protein, you see one is combined with three, five, and six. Over here, one, three, four, five, six. So this process is called alternative splicing. Alternative splicing is very important because from the one messenger RNA, you combine the exon in the different sequence, right? Different way and making a large number of unique or different protein. That is what they are trying to tell about the alternative splicing. You see one question in the U word about the alternative splicing. So make your windows open and understand what they are asking. I don't recall the question, but there is a question. Alternative splicing can produce a variety of proteins produced from a single heterogeneous RNA, right? One heterogeneous RNA, splicing is occurred, and you are making different proteins, right? Heterogeneous RNA sequence, for example, transmembrane versus secreted uh, uh, immunoglobulin, tropomycin variants in the muscle, dopamine receptor in brain, host defenses. Available. No need to remember all this. They are not very important. But just you have to remember is what? That in one heterogeneous RNA, you are making 
a lot ton of the proteins which performing different function. Maybe this is the uh, transmembrane protein. This is the immunoglobulin. This is the receptor, right? But they are coming from the only one heterogeneous RNA, right? Okay, so that is the story about the alternative splicing. Okay, going to the next. Uh, let me remove this. Oh. Okay, so next is splicing of free messenger RNA. Now, now they come to the actual talk. So what is the splicing messenger RNA? This is also a very important high yield topic. Okay, so you can mark it. Uh, let me highlight this one. Okay, splicing of the pre-messenger RNA. So what is happening? For part of the process by which precursor messenger RNA, pre-messenger RNA is transferred into a mature messenger RNA. Again, so I told you there the heterogeneous or the premature messenger RNA is converted into mature messenger RNA by three processes on your tips. One, cap. Two, tail. Three, splice. So this is third thing they are explaining over here. Splicing. So they say when you are converting the precursor of the messenger RNA or premature RNA to the mature RNA, splicing is occurring. Introns typically begins with the G, U, and and end with the A, G. So these are your introns. You see, this is the exon, colored one. Now they they magnify it. So they said your intron is starting with the G, U. This is very important. It, this is not alternatively because they why these things are important because if they put questions and show you these diagrams. And they said, oh, this is coding string. Oh, this is what none of us saying something. This is something we know. So what is that you have to remember? The G, U, and at A, G, that means they're showing you the intron segment in between the two exons. So this is for the recognition of you guys. Nothing is unimportant in the biochemistry, okay? So introns are started, begins with the G, U, and end with the A, G. Alternation in the S, N, R, and P assembly can cause clinical disease, for example, in spinal muscular atrophy, S, N, R, and P assembly is affected. So what is S, N, R, and P? These are small nuclear ribonucleoproteins, right? So this S, N, R, and P are basically proteins. So what is the job of these proteins? These are the proteins, right over here, you see, big, big balls, green color. These are the, your U1, S, N, R, and P, small nuclear RNA, R, ribonucleoprotein, U2, small nuclear RNA, uh, ribonuclear protein. So they are basically attaching and cutting over here, cleaving this intron and making a supply so and taking it away. That is the job of your SNRNP. Now they say if there is an alteration in their assembly, they are not properly assembled, right? So then they will result in disease. What is the disease name? This is called spinal muscular atrophy. Spinal muscular atrophy. SNRP assembly is affected due to decreased survival motor nu nuclear protein, if I'm not wrong. So this protein will be decreased when this assembly is affected, right? And the child with result in spinal muscular atrophy, so what would be happen? Congenital degeneration of the interior horn of the cell, right? So you know what is happening if you have degeneration of the interior horn of the cells? There is lower motor problem, right? Lower motor problems, metric weakness, hypotonia, floppy baby syndrome. So floppy baby syndrome. So you know there's a polio, right? So polio is caused by the polio virus, right? And polio virus also causes degeneration of the interior horns of the spinal cord, right? And floppy baby syndrome, hypotonia, symmetric muscle weakness in spinal muscular atrophy, the presentation is same as like a polio virus, right? But the differentiation is polio is caused by the polio virus. And in this spinal muscular atrophy, you have the problem with the small nuclear ribonuclear protein assembly. They are not assembled. They are not going into their proper place to cut down the introns. And introns are basically expressed or whatsoever the problem with this protein alteration result in the spinal muscular atrophy syndrome in the children. And the children will look like a hypotonic or floppy baby syndrome. SNRNPs are the SNRNA bound to protein. So these two are the proteins. SNRNPs are the SNRNA bound to proteins. For example, Smith protein to form a spliceosome that cleave pre-messenger RNA, right? So what is these protein function? They basically cleave, cleave the messenger RNA, pre-messenger RNA to remove the introns. 
NTU one SNRNP antibody. So what is so up to here you have to what, what remember that in the precursor messenger RNA or premature RNA you have five prime and exons and in between the exons you have the antron. So in the antrons first androns are started with the GU and ending in the AGN, right? So then you have SNRNP proteins. So these are called small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. Small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, they are very important. They bound to some SNRNA protein and their job is to remove the intron to make a cyclisosome and cleaving the introns at the start and the end point. Right? Now, if this SNRNP assembly, assembly is affected, you will result in the congenital degeneration of the this uh, interior horn cells are interior horns of the spinal cords and you will result in a disease which is called spinal muscular atrophy or floppy baby syndrome, right? Now, second thing what they told you about, that is anti-U1 SNRP antibodies. So these are your SNRP antibodies. Now, they are not talking about their assembly, like they are not going into their proper position. Now, they're talking about the antibodies, like autoimmune diseases. You form some antibodies against these SNRP proteins. These proteins are very important because these proteins work is what they move, remove the antrons from the precursor messenger RNA to form it to the mature messenger RNA. If these antrons are not removed, your mature messenger RNA is not formed and down the road, you cannot take the proteins, right? So what is they are saying? If there is an antibodies against these U1 SNRNP and U2 SNRP or U1 SNRP or anywhere, antibodies are attached to them then you are associated with the SLE, mixed connective tissue disorder, or other rheumatic disease. This line is also very important. Today, whatever I teach you, single every single line is very important. That's why I repeat it again and again and again, right? So what is happening over here, the pink one? Primary transcript combined with the small nuclear ribonuclear proteins and other proteins to form the spliceosome, right? So what is happening? U1 SNRP coming over here, U2 SNRP coming over here, right? This is the branch point. This is the five prime slide side. This is the three prime slide side. Now they are saying what? Cleavage at the five prime slide side. So first cleavage is right over here. This is the five prime slide side, right over here. First cleavage is happening. Lariate shaped looped intermediate is generated. First slide is over here. And this is lariate shaped uh, loop is generated. Then they said what? Next is. Cleavage at the three prime splice site, lariate is released to precisely remove the introns and joint to its own. So what is happening? There is a phosphate group over here, right? You see this phosphate group, it will combine, go and combine with this A, this UG and combine with this A. Not remember all these details, just you have to remember, they will ask you where the first cleavage is happening. First cleavage is happening at the five prime supply end, and the next cleavage is happening at the three prime supply site, Lariate shape intermediate spliceosome is formed and it is released, making the two exon they are united again with each other with, with which thing? Phosphate group, a phosphate bond. We can ask you which one? Phosphate bond. That is you have to remember. So this is your mature RNA. In mature RNA exons are expressed. Okay. Okay. Coming to the next page. So this is the transfer RNA, very important. <clears throat> So I think so this is whole story you understand. What is heterogeneous and mature messenger RNA? Now transfer RNA, this is also very important. Now what are they telling? First it tells you about the structure of this transfer RNA. In the u what they will tell you something that the uh, there is a structure which is having 90 plus nucleotide or 70 plus nucleotide and you are like wondering like what is that structure which is having nucleotide? It must be a coding strain. If they tell you some structure having 70, 90 plus nucleotide along with they use this word, clover leaf. So that means they are talking about the transfer RNA. They sometimes don't use the word transfer RNA. They use the things to describe something. You know that the step one is the steps. One step, they describe some disease. Second step, you reach to the diagnosis. And third step, they ask you the question, right? Okay, so in the question, in the U word, they will tell you something about like a 90 nucleotide, clover leaf structure, and then you have to immediately click in your mind. They are talking about the transfer RNA. One thing, remember that the messenger RNA have the coda, right? Because it is coming from the coding DNA. Coding DNA, transcription, pre-messenger, recursive messenger RNA, mature messenger RNA. So mature messenger RNA have the codon or the message from the coding DNA, right? But anti-codon, when they use the word, Second hint, 
we are talking about the transfer RNA because the anticodon is on the transfer RNA. Anti mean codon on the transfer RNA. Right over here, AUG is the codon. And against this codon is anticodon. Okay. So what is happening over here? So 90 nucleotide secondary structure cover leaf form anticodon and is opposite to the three prime end. So this is your three prime end. Opposite to this three prime end, you have the anticodon segment, right? So uh, and is opposite to three, what I said, anticodon and is opposite to three prime amino acyl end. The same thing. This is amino acyl end and opposite to this one is the anticodon. All transfer RNA, both the eukaryote and prokaryote have CCA. This is very important. See, transfer RNA, both in prokaryote and the eukaryote are the same. Have CCA. Don't forget that over here, I tell you RNA polymerases, which make the RNA transfer RNA messenger RNA. Now, they are not talking about the RNA polymerases. Over here, they are talking about the transfer RNA, a brother, right? I told you there are three brothers, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA. Now they're talking about the transfer RNA brother. So this brother have both in the eukaryote and prokaryote have CCA, which is can carry amino acids, which end at the three prime end. These are general information you have to remember because this is very important. They can ask you that the amino acid come and attach to which side of the transfer RNA. Can carry amino acid over here, CCA, because you read or you synthesize the protein from five, five, five prime end to the three prime end. So you read this one five by five prime CCA three prime, right? So that's why three three CCA at the three prime and along with the high percentage of chemically modified bases. Leave it just you have to remember that at the three prime end you have CCA code which is can carry amino acid. The amino acid is covalently bound to the three prime end of the transfer RNA. This can you ask that a hydrogen bond is attached? No, it is covalently bound. Amino acid is really covalently bound to the three prime end of the transfer RNA can carry amino acid the same thing. So transfer RNA basically having three arms. There is one, this arm, this is called attachment arm right over here. It can carry the amino acid, the three prime. Arm. Then it will having the T arm. T arm is called tethering, tethering. So in T arm, you have this C, mu, T sequence. And this is for the attachment of the ribosomes. Then there is a D arm. D arm is for the attachment of the amino acid transfer RNA synthetase. And then there is the anticodon loop or anticodon, which is opposite to the three prime, right? So what is the structure repeating again? 75 to 90 nucleotide structure, clover leaf structures, the anticodon loop is on the opposite of the three prime. So transfer RNA, which is a clover leaf structure, have three arms. There is the attachment site, which is called, first is the attachment site. Attachment site is at the three prime end, which is CCA, right? Then there is a T arm, which is having C mu T sequence. It is tethering with the ribosome, mean ribosomes are coming and attached right over here, right? And then there is a D arm, D arm have deoxyribodine something, and over here, amino acid transfer RNA synthetase enzyme is attached. And then there is the anticodon loop, which is opposite to the three prime end, and it read the codon on the messenger RNA like this. This is the whole story about this they are talking about. Now, I told you about the attachment arm. T arm contains the T. T mu, I don't know what it's called, T mu C, ribothymidine, pseudouridine, and cystidine. You have to remember these structure, but you can easily recognize they are talking about the transfer RNA. Necessity for the transfer RNA ribosomes binding, which I think T arm, T does the transfer RNA molecule to the ribosome, which is very important. Then D arms contain dehydrouridine. Yeah, this D and D are the deoxy. Uh, dihydrouridine residue necessity for the Recognition necessity for the transfer RNA recognition by the correct amino acid transfer RNA synthetase. So, what is that amino acid transfer RNA synthetase? This is the enzyme, right? So, D arms are for detection of the transfer RNA by the amino acid transfer RNA synthetase. D, they give you some mnemonic, right? Either you can rem remember that the D arm have dihydrouridine residue. And it will attach the correct amino acid transfer RNA synthetase enzyme. Uh, it is the D arm will detect the transfer RNA amino acid transfer pRNA synthetase enzyme, right? Attachment side again, they repeat this is 3 prime ACC. ACC 5 prime is the amino acid acceptor. They give chain, they make it acceptor. Anyway, which mnemonic work for you? Can carry amino acid, the detection of the this enzyme, or D or dihydrouridine. Is the basically you can remember. So this is the whole story. This is all things I repeat over here. 
that is the whole story now this is about the structure structure is very important because sometime i told you they don't give you the transfer rna word they give you the structures like they will use the word nitinucleotide several lead things and it have the anticondon sequence and this and that and they will ask you which arm of this structure will be the attachment site for the amino site transfer rna synthetase so it is dr then they can ask you which is the residue on this dr that have to uridine residue right mostly they don't ask but this is the questions right uh, mostly they will ask you about this one which which area or which site the of the transfer rna will attach the amino acid incoming chain that is attached at the three prime end, can carry amino acid okay now what is the charging you know something should attach with this transfer rna to make this uh, uh, rna charge charge me not ready to perform its function it is sitting alone like let's say that transfer rna is sitting alone in the cytoplasm no job nothing right messenger rna is sitting in the p bodies nothing Ribosome is attached to the endoplasmic reticulum or wandering around in the streets. So when some message is coming to the messenger RNA, messenger RNA come outside the P-body, oh guys, let's go. We need to make something. We necessary to do some job, make some protein. So these three structures, three brothers get activated to make some proteins, right? So how they will get activated? Charge first. This transfer RNA has to be charged. So how it is charged? Amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase uses ATP, one unique enzyme per respective amino acid. And binding of the charge transfer RNA to the codon are responsible for the accuracy of amino acid selection. So what is that? Amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase matches an amino acid to the transfer RNA by scrutinizing the amino acid before and after it binds to the transfer RNA. So what they are saying over here, that this enzyme, amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase, it get the ATP, Converted AMP and PPI, getting the energy and get attached to this one. But what is the property of this enzyme? This amino acyl transfer RNA, you can make a picture in your brain. There are thousands of enzymes inside this, this transfer RNA enzyme. Not the thousand, you can say you know, whatever the quantity of the amino acid, right? I think it's 120 minus that I don't recall. So one, one of these enzymes is specific for one amino acid. Let's say I'm just giving you the example of methionine, right? Methionine is an amino acid, right? So this amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase have typically job for attachment of the methionine, right? So what it will do? It will uh, scrutinizing the amino acid. Like it take the methionine and make sure when it utilize the energy and attach over here, it makes sure that the amino acid which come on this acceptor side should be methionine. So this amino acid transfer RNA is responsible for the accurate amino acid recognition selection and putting onto the same codon. So that is what they are saying, repeating again. Amino acid transfer RNA synthetase uses ATP, one unique enzyme per respective amino acid. And binding of the charge transfer RNA to the codon. It charge it, right? Because it gives some power to this one. Now to the codon are responsible for the accuracy of amino acid selection. Amino acid RNA synthetase matches an amino acid to the transfer RNA by scrutinizing the amino acid before and after it binds to the transfer RNA. Like it makes sure that the correct amino acid is added. If an incorrect amino acid is attached at this point, the bond is hydrolyzed. Let's say this transfer RNA synthetase, it, it said that this anticodon should be recognized the methionine codon over here. But instead of methionine, it add another amino acid glutamine. So what has happened? The bond will be hydrolyzed, right? Wrong amino acid is attached. A mischarged, mischarged transfer RNA reads the usual codon but insert the wrong amino acid. It means that the, if this is the Methionine, but over here aspartate is attached, but over here the anticodon is for methionine. So what is happening? Codon, usual codon reads, but insert the wrong amino acid because wrong thing is uh, wrong amino acid transfer is on and is uh, attached. Let's say this amino size transfer RNA synthetase, if instead of charging methionine, it is for aspartate, right? Aspartate. Over here, the codon is for aspartate, but the attachment is methionine. So this is how they call wrong amino acid is inserted and the charge transfer RNA is wrongly charged. So what you need to remember over here on this stage is that transfer RNA synthetase is particular for the particular minus. Right? Can you repeat the uh, point? 
this uh, this point last point which you said what uh the the charge mischarged mischarge mean like not right amino acid is attached right i'm saying like this amino cell transfer rna synthetase it is saying this transfer rna that you have to insert the aspartate right okay. so it give the atp to amp it give phosphate to this side charge the amino acid everything but this anticodon is for aspartate code is for aspartate but the methionine is attached so that means wrong amino acid is inserted that means this this is mischarged or you can say this is not for the aspartate let's say this is for methionine but the code is for the aspartate so yes. code and the anticodon is for aspartate but this is mischarged with the mischarged amino uh, synthetase enzyme the enzyme was for the aspartate so aspartate is attached but the code and the anticodon are for the uh methionine right so wrong amino acid is inserted this is how they are saying this is simply game just you have to remember that this synthetase is for particular enzyme if it is for methionine their code it should be methionine the anticodon should be methionine and the methionine should be inserted mm -hmm. if let's say this is for the aspartate right it charge for the aspartate the codon is for the aspartate the anticodon is for the aspartate but methionine is inserted Wrong amino acid is inserted. This is called mischarged. Okay. Mischarged amino acid is attached. Okay. okay. Star codon and star codon. So, what are those? Messenger RNA star codon. This is very important. The star codon is always AUG. On the next page, you say always methionine was the star. AUG is in a great protein synthesis. So, first star codon must be AUG. Then, on the top of methionine, other amino acid will be added to form the protein. A eukaryotic. This course for the methionine, which may be removed before translation is completed. So it is removed, right? When translation is completed. You create prokaryotic code for the N5 methionine. So basically, what they are saying over here, they are saying that for messenger RNA, the start codon is AUG. As you see over here, the first codon for the uh, uh, over here is AUG, 5 prime AUG, 3 prime N, right? So the what is over here? 5 prime CAU. Right over here, and then methionine will be inserted. So that is the stored amino acid. It should be methionine. But when polypeptide chain is removed, formed, it is automatically in there. Right? So this is you have to remember. In a eukaryote, it's from methionine. In the prokaryote, it's from N formal methionine. You would question what is the N formal methionine function. Neutrophil chemotaxis. So neutrophil chemotaxis is happening by interleukin. There are certain things. Interleukin 8. Then there is a decotrine B4, if I'm not wrong. Then third one is C5A. Then there is n formal methionine, bacterial products. All these things are high yield. Whatever is the neutrophil chemotaxis, they should be on your fingertips. Okay. This would be tested in the U word. This should be tested in the board, real day. Okay. So, wherever you see neutrophil chemotaxis, so as I told you earlier, write down over here neutrophil chemotaxis on your hard copy. And everything you find in any chapter in immunology, you will see the certain examples. Start putting down over here. Six, seven, eight things are causes neutrophil chemotaxis. And you will only remember only four things the last time. No, there are eight things. They can ask anything. Okay, so combine them together. Messenger RNA star codon, UGA, UAG, UAG recognized and by releasing factor. So what is happening when protein synthesis is happening? There are some releasing factor which is released, right? So let's say what's happening. Tomorrow I will start the protein synthesis. So let's say this is your large subunit of the ribosome. This is the small unit of the ribosome, right? Now what is happening now that messenger RNA there are five prime. 5 prime to 3 prime, right? Now the transfer RNA, it is like T-shaped. I will make it like this, right? So it come over here and start reading the codon. So codon is over here on your messenger RNA. Anticodon is over here. Anticodon is on the transfer RNA, right? And these are the ribosomes. This whole complex is made together to form the proteins, right? So now how the protein is formed, this is later on. Like let's say over here, the methionine is attached. So this is methionine, right? On top of methionine, what is happening? Different amino acids, they are start adding. We will make this polypeptide chain. 
different amino acids, right? So these amino acids are start adding over here. So this is the polypeptide chain, right? So when this polypeptide chain is happening right this way, in between over here is what happens, the stop codon comes right here, like this way, right? So whenever the stop codon, it is basically coming over this way, right? Stop codon is happening, whatever, wherever this is coming. The releasing factor, they will recognize this stop codon, right? So where this stop codon is located on this strip, right over here. So when this stop codon is recognized by the releasing factor, they will immediately release, cut down over here, and this chain is released. So what is this change? chain? It is polypeptide. Right? So what does that mean? That these are the amino acids. So amino acids, they mark them, make the polypeptide chain. So when this chain encountered a stop codon, this chain is released like this. This is a chain, polypeptide. Then it will utilize many functions, right? So that is the job we will discuss about these things in detail, how the protein synthesis will be happen. Protein synthesis is very complicated. Even I don't understand, sometimes I have to pay attention, what, 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 what. But you have to just remember the few points. They will not ask you to make the protein in the exams, okay? Always remember. They just want you to have clear concept they are talking about. The concept is what? Replication. Concept is what? Transcription. Trans concept is what? Translation. What things are used in the translation? Where the ATP is utilized? Now I ask you, synthetase use the ATP or no? Amino cell transfer RNA synthetase. It utilizes ATP? No? No. It utilizes, guys, right over here. See? How the, how the transfer RNA is charged if it is not utilizing the RNA? Right? Yes. Keep it in mind. Open your brain. Open your brain. Keep looking, keep looking. This is the question where the ATP is used, where the GTP is used, right? Where the ATP is used, activation, where is the GTP used for going places, gripping? So GTP is two places. Over here, initiation, you utilize the GTP. In the elongation, you require the GTP, right? And in the termination, you again require the GTP. And these are the things they will play with you. They were not asking you to make the protein on the paper. They ask you, you know, which step utilize ATP, which step utilize GTP, which enzyme utilize is at this point, which enzyme is causing the charge of the transfer RNA, minocyl transfer RNA synthetase. What is the job of the releasing factor? What is the job of the initiation factor, right? So these are the questions, okay? Anyhow, the stop codon or what? So this, you go away, you are away, you are gone. This is always confusing in my brain, going like, like you go away, you went, you do what you do. So I will simply do what? I will say U A A. First, I will remember always this, right? U A A. Then I said G A and A D. If simplify, you can say U U U. Whenever there is U U U, it is go away. Mean stop go down, right? Then I put on the top of first A A. Then I said G A. And then AG. This is very important. Why it is very important? Because they give you the U word question. And these are the most hard question even I cannot handle. But I can only tell if they give you in the option, they ask you why this protein is terminated, that I always look on the coding strain, you encountered these things. Then you can say, Oh, yeah, 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 it is encountered an early codon. And they will simply ask you, choose which thing is responsible for the termination of this polypeptide chain. So that is the stop codon, right? So that is very, very, very important. Okay, so, so far, five minutes are left. Okay.